All right, now the center on Thursday declared that there has been a slight decline in the progression rate of COVID-19 and uh, this as it made the health ministry the sole data provider for COVID-19 cases ostensibly to remove discrepancies caused by data handling by multiple agencies. But uh, let's go across uh, to our uh, Panelists on the show, our guests are on the show. We have Shamika Ravi. She's the director of research at Brookings uh, India, a former member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory uh, Council. And we also have Dr. Sanjay Nagral, surgeon with the Just Lok Hospital uh, also, and, and the chairperson of the Forum for Medical Ethics. Uh, Shamika Ravi, to you first. I'm looking at your Twitter feed right now and you are tweeting um, that the growth rate of confirmed cases is now on the decline in India. And this comes at a time where the government has come in for a lot of criticism. Uh, many have raised questions about whether this lockdown was actually thought through properly. Uh, given that, your tweet is interesting. Why have you tweeted what you have? And please explain. We're playing that graph out uh, on our screens right now. Please explain what has led you uh, to say this. Well, uh, Sarah, this is what the data says. Uh, and uh, that's because if you look at the growth rate, now it is very important that people understand that the actual numbers will continue to rise. But if uh, you look at pre-March uh, 23rd, the rate at which the con confirmed cases were rising in India, it was a rate at which we were doubling every three days. <clears throat> and from March 23rd onwards, that growth rate has declined, which means you're still growing. The mm. number of cases will continue to rise. But we are now growing at a rate where we are doubling every five days. And usually, well, we know that this virus has an incubation period of 10 to 14 days which means you have to trace this back to policies that were enacted about 10 days before uh, you, you see this, right? So when you go back to March 12, that's when, uh, you know, you've, you've had very large scale uh, travel ban from several hotspot countries. Uh, the schools and colleges were shut down. In fact, some states also invoked the Epidemic Disease Act. So I think, uh, you know, in being proactive, uh, I think the state has you know begun to flatten the curve now the impact of the lockdown will really take another seven days for us to see in the data itself right mm. <clears throat> but it's important to note that uh, you know the reason we are seeing this major expansion in, in the u.s and we've seen in many of the eu countries is because uh, you know unlike in the indian case where very proactively i think it was the third week of jan when they started to airlift students uh, and from, you know, not just from Wuhan, but from other affected areas, subsequently Iran and, and uh, Italy, etc. And they were, they were not brought in and sort of let loose into the population. They were isolated and kept uh, in camps. And then subsequently the surveillance and the screening happened. So I think in a hindsight, you know, these were, these are extremely good steps that were taken because of which we are beginning to see a slight flattening. Now, <clears throat> it's important to note that we don't know what is the uh, true condition as far as community spread is concerned. Because to rule that out, we really need to have uh, more uh, sampling, you know, more tests done. And uh, currently, whatever the number of tests we are doing, the confirmed cases for every uh, 100 tests hmm. is, is pretty low, right? We only have 2% uh, confirmed positive cases for every 100 tests. Now, this is actually remarkably low if you compare it with the U.S., where it is about 15 or 18 cases, or Italy, where there were 22 cases per 100 uh, tests. So I think the transmission has been uh, uh, slowed. It has bought us more time. Now, what we do with, ta with that time is, is very critical right now. All right. Uh, so I agree with many of your points and I hope uh, you're right. But uh, uh, you started off by saying this is what the data is showing the center. And the government has also been under attack by the opposition or, or critics about a lack of data convergence, first and foremost. Isn't that a concern when you say that this is what the data is saying? Well, Sarah, this is Johns Hopkins data. I don't, I mean, my job is not to read tea leaves. The, the, look, the government should definitely put out more data. There is no two ways about it. But I'm giving you a result based on what analysis based we've been carrying out for the last three weeks. Based only on the data that is given weeks. to us by the government. 
no i am looking at johns hopkins data which i presume is dependent on the data that india makes public or as like the other countries which which are sharing data with who and uh, johns hopkins because even now uh, i think it was yesterday or the evening before 30 minutes to the end of the day and icmr still hadn't still hadn't uh, um, come out with its uh, usual evening update of covid 2019 positive cases in the country they say that these uh, updates would be streamlined from tomorrow no explanation for why they're not releasing these updates isn't that uh, a concern well that is and you must ask them that question except the data i'm showing you is from march until march 23rd and all the way until 28th so hmm. this decline in the growth rate is not a function of what icmr might have said yesterday okay this is what okay. the data is showing us from a long term trend okay uh, dr um, nagral joining us uh, from uh, mumbai dr nagral where does the fact that uh, the government has also come under criticism for not doing enough testing where does that play out when we look at these uh, figures we look at the data which is pointing to a flattening of the curve right sarah so first of all uh, thank you for having me on your program and i must say that i'm not a epidemiologist or a or a, uh, even a public health expert, but I work in two large hospitals in Mumbai, one in the private and one in the public sector, and uh, I'm seeing the epidemic uh, unfolding in front of my eyes. So, uh, you know, one of the problems with the testing data is uh, that, uh, you know, we don't know the, first of all, it's early days. Uh, we don't know the denominator. Uh, my sense is that we didn't test adequately hmm. and that uh, we are just about beginning to now test more and more. In Mumbai city, for example, for a, for at least 10 to 15 days, there was only one center which was in the center of the city, no suburban center. So the access to testing itself is a big problem. And therefore, if you don't test enough, uh, you get a certain data. And um, based on that data, of course, you make policy. But uh, I think we need to be realistic that this data has some limitations. All right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, both of you, for joining us and for putting all of that uh, into perspective. But I think, as uh, Shami says there, what the government does with the time that we have gained uh, by this uh, lockdown is what is critical right now. Thank you both for joining us. Now,